Ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause to Mr. Saurabh Chaudhary. Thank you. Well, the numbers are a bit old. I'll update you, no need to worry. Hi guys, how are you? Excited? Excited to learn? I'm also excited to learn from each one of you. Looking forward to that. I'll tell you a bit about myself. Okay, so, thank you. Love it. Okay, so yeah, that's me. I call myself a psycho marketer. You will get to know the reason in a few minutes. So I'll start with my story. Who am I? Some of you may be knowing me. Or some, I'm like, the first day you people are seeing me. So let me bring everybody on the same page. I'm a digital marketing consultant. I have been working with various clients for creating their marketing strategies and helping them to build their brands, increasing their business across the world. It's been over a decade. I am working on internet and getting good business for people and for myself as well. But things are a bit different. Okay, so I specialize in e-commerce and marketing psychology. Apart from that, I'm a trainer. I have written books as well. I do speak at various conferences across the world. That's something that has come up after years of getting into different things, trying, testing, seeing the ups and downs of life. I can say that, yes, it's, it's somewhere in the middle of the way where my dreams are, but Thankfully, it's something where I'm happy. There is still a lot to achieve, but yes. But things were never the same. Now, I am also a writer of this, this book. He was talking about 19,000 copies. Till date, it has sold 25,000 plus copies. This was my first book, which I launched last year. I wanted to do something for people who just want to get into digital marketing. I mean, I, I saw the market, there were a lot of guides, books, and whatnot available for advanced studies. But for beginners, all of the information that was there, that was too scattered across. Sometimes there were some miscommunications also in various blogs, so a lot of confusion. That is the reason I came up with a guide which focuses purely on beginners, a step-by-step -step guide which I wrote. In fact, I confidently claim that this is the easiest book, easiest guide on Google AdWords. Thankfully, people loved it and I sold around 25,000 copies in just 18 months. I have just written this book, Psycho Marketing, which is a guide for marketing psychology. This was launched 14th October, just last month and I've crossed 5,200 sales for this. Things are going good for this anyhow, but it definitely did not happen overnight. It cannot, it is impossible for things to happen overnight. It, it may sound magical if it actually happens, but the overnight success takes years of hard work. For me, it took some years. Let me tell you about myself more. Well, in India, Internet came somewhere around 96 and 97. How many people remember when the internet was launched in India, when it just came in India? Was anybody on internet at that time? Wonderful. What was the first website that you visited? Or your first email address? There was something even before Hotmail. AOL and USA.net. Yeah, that, that also came later on. Before that, it was only AOL. Then later on, MSN came into picture. That was a time when I fell in love with computers and internet. I was a kid studying in 8th standard that time. Thankfully, my school got new internet connection and in library we used to go and access. It was fun and fascinating. 
So I hooked onto internet at that time itself. I was among first few Indians who got onto internet. Anybody remembers Windows 3.1? How was it? 95 is better? <laughs> I prefer 98. <laughs> but yeah, that was fun using the floppy disk and all. It was magical. I mean, this used to be a supercomputer at that time. Then what happened? I passed out my school, went to college. It was my second year in college. I'm a curious person. I've always been curious. If I get my interest into something, I want to know everything about it. So what happened is my brother was doing some computer course at some institute at that time. At that time, a lot of different kind of courses were very prominent in various institutes. So my brother was taking up the course. One day I came across his book of website designing. As I was so much interested on internet and, you know, spending 100 rupees going to cyber cafe, it was fascinating with just an idea that you can create your own website. I mean, that was wow. I started reading that book, started my first web page, Hello World with HTML, and then gradually started making websites just for fun, just to learn it. It was my hobby. In 2003, my second year of college, I had to do some project. I was looking for some codes of Java. There was a website called as jguru.com from where we used to get code and snippets for Java. Accidentally, I did a typo error and reached guru.com. That was a freelancing website of that time. It literally blew my head off that sitting at my home, I can work for somebody, earn money by doing something that's my hobby. And that somebody is sitting across the world at some other corner of the globe. I was excited. I created my profile within four days, got my first project. That was for $50 in 2003. Not a huge money right now, but Imagine 2003, a college going kid, it was months pocket money, man. So did that first project, took me around seven days. That time websites were simple, photos or text, that's it. And I remember when we used to upload photos and while checking the website, the image used to come millimeter by millimeter. Anybody has experienced that? Dial up connections, how was it, fast? Give somebody that dial-up connection right now, either he will commit suicide or murder somebody. <laughs> okay, so then I kept on getting more and more projects. And I kept on getting more and more excited about that. I mean, while my friends were enjoying their college time, having fun, I was making money. Exciting. College ended. And as every other engineer, I went to Bangalore. At that time, it was the trend. Started working in IT job while still being a freelancer. But I moved on from web designing to SEO as things advanced in India. At that time, if you ask somebody what's digital marketing, their answer will be, huh, what's that? So still, things kept on going. I got some clients which were regular, nobody from India though. My major clients were from US and Canada. So things kept on going, kept on working. Why my presentation is going ahead? <laughs> you move it back? Yeah, back, back. That's, that, that's it, that's it. Okay. So I, I was working in mainframes and SAP. Ever heard of that? Distributed systems. Uh, my job was to sit at my desk for 12 hours, look at the time and run commands. Me being engineer, always try to find shortcuts. I created macros. Based on time, commands will automatically run. So 12 hour shift, I used to sit for half an hour. Rest 11 and a half hours, I used to get bored. Nothing to do. Too monotonous job. I mean, yes, the job was good in good brands, but it was, it became monotonous over the time. I mean, I could have done that while being asleep. All I have to do is check the time and run with some basic commands. Sometimes 
when you are lucky, there were some escalations, there were some errors. So we had something to work for, but that happened rarely. But apart from that, nothing. And anybody remembers 2008 recession? That was the first wake up call for me that my job is not secure at all. So anybody who is into IT understands that either you have to keep on constantly upgrading yourself because one technology comes up and another goes down. Mainframes was at the peak that time, gradually it kept on going down and SAP came up. So all ERP systems were like that. So every time you have to get into training, learn new things, then maybe look for a job. And the biggest thing is the politics that happens in all big corporates. I was not that kind of person. That was okay. Seven years I gave to my corporate life. Progressed a bit, but that wasn't enough for me. I really did not want that kind of life where I'm sitting in front of computer, getting decent salary, but where is the excitement? One day I was sitting and thinking what to do, what, what is happening? Suddenly I got a thought that what I'm doing as a hobby, why not make that as my career? Why not be happy in doing something that I love to do rather than working for somebody and doing boring jobs? Did nothing, sat for a couple of hours, created the whole plan, understanding that, okay, I want to get into digital marketing. Although I'm part of digital marketing industry, but I'm still not fully active. I'm a freelancer. I work on just the projects that I get. So a limited scope. So what I did, I created a list of everything that is needed to get into the market. Because one thing I learned very early in my life, either give 100% or don't do it at all. If you do it half-heartedly, the results are going to be half only or maybe nothing. So either give it all or nothing. So I literally brainstormed, did research, sat for hours, created a list of what has to be done, ensured that I remembered that the next morning, started working on it since next day, went out in market when I felt that, okay, I'm ready for it. Within four days, got a job in a marketing agency. I was lucky enough or let's say I was at the right place at the right time. But even that was not what I wanted. I wanted something more. I'm a hungry person. So I thought, yes, that's a stepping stone in my life. That's a gateway for me into the actual digital marketing world. But that's not where I want to be. Learned the skills fast enough, understood the market, understood how the business of digital marketing works. After around a year, started my own business into it. Collaborated with the agency, started working, and since then, never looked back. But again, that wasn't enough for me. I wanted to do something bigger. I mean, I worked with good clients. I have been working with some of the biggest brands of India and the world, but I was at the back scene. I was never a person who people would know in the industry. I was seeing there was a huge awareness of digital marketing coming in. It was literally like a flood that is coming in India. A lot of people started getting interested. What is digital marketing? How it's working? Some brands evolved to digital marketing, but still a lot of brands, a lot of companies and people were still away from that. So I thought, why not get into the real game now? I thought, let's build a brand. Let's create our own identity. Let's create an identity that people would remember me. Not because that I want to be treated like, okay, this is the guy who knows everything, but I knew that is the way to scale the business. That is the way how I can proceed ahead. Whatever I've done behind the scenes, that was enough. That was it. But my, as I'm hungry, I wanted to get more buy of the market. First thing that I did, I wrote my first book because 
book writing is one of the fastest way to build your authority in the industry. I mean, look at it psychologically. I, I talk a lot about psychology. I preach psychology a lot. I practice psychology a lot. So psychologically speaking, anybody out of you, let's say two people are talking. One person has a query, another person answers that query and helps. Automatically, your subconscious mind puts that person on a higher pedestal, making them feel that this guy is an expert. This guy knows more than me. So that trust factor comes automatically. So that was my first entry towards writing my book. It took me six months to write the book. Launched in April last year. It was, it, it actually got great response. Not in the start, but after around one and a half month, it started picking up. First one and a half month, it was really slow. But then suddenly it started picking up. It started picking up because I started parallelly working on classroom trainings and workshops. Presently, I do workshops across the world. I teach people e-commerce, how to make money using e-commerce as your own business, leading a wonderful life. People who want to scale, scale ahead. People who want to lead a comfortable life, working for two hours a day or even two hours a week. That's what I provide. But that's not it. Along with that, I also started speaking at various international events. My first international event was in Vietnam, where I talked about how psychology can impact e-commerce buyers. How you can persuade people to buy from you by triggering specific thoughts in their mind through your communication or your ads was accepted well, then gradually kept on working ahead, building my brand, which helped to sell my books, get online course enrollments, got a lot of job offers, got a lot of options to work for businesses as a consultant and kept on getting more and more events. That was the first success that my branding showed, but that was not enough. I wanted to do better as I'm hungry. I've said it a lot. I wanted more. So what I did, I wrote another book, which is on marketing psychology. Now, the reason why I wrote this book is I saw that nobody in India talks about marketing psychology or what we marketers call as neuromarketing. Everybody, I mean, you look around, talk with people, talk with agencies, talk with the leaders in India. Nobody emphasizes how psychology impacts online marketing. I mean, talk about branding, talk about sales, even as simple as clicking and going to a website involves a lot of psychology. Now, maybe during childhood or now or by watching some movie, we all have always thought we should have superpower of reading other people's brain, right? We all have wanted that. How amazing will it be if you can read somebody's brain? What if I can just look at you and read your thoughts? How would that be? Great. You want to listen to something better? What if... I can persuade you to do exactly what I want to do. It may sound something else, but I'm talking genuine here. <laughs> how, how would that be? If you get that power that you can make people do what you want them to do, how will that be? <laughs> that is a reality. That is a possibility which you can actually do. Does anybody know that 97% of our decisions are made by our subconscious mind. We all think that whatever we are doing, whatever we are deciding is by a lot of thought process, by a lot of planning, but our brain doesn't work that way. Our human brain is wired that way that we are bound to get persuaded. 
forget about people who don't know for people who know that how this works they also are bound to follow that i mean i wrote this book i have done research on psychology for around 6 years now have read around thousands of research paper have actually read, written a lot of research papers for different people that's a different story but even now i also am bound to fall for the persuasion that happens because we are wired that way so there is no escape to this so seeing that gap in market i mean this is something that is base of marketing you need to understand how the, your audience's brain function if i want to build a brand i need to understand that what kind of triggers will create an brand perception in my audience's mind and that's what branding is all about what what people perceive of your brand coming on to sales people need to get the feeling that what they are paying is definitely less worth than what they are getting so it all starts here rather than talking about platforms budget and what not and that is the reason i created this book i wanted people to understand that how they can use psychology not just for marketing even in their regular day to day life imagine five friends want to go to some place three of them want to go one place two want to go another place they also need to persuade each other so persuasion works everywhere you want to convince your parents you want to convince your girlfriend boyfriend spouse and what not everything has to be from the mind so proud to say that this is the only guide in india which talks about all kinds of psychological impacts in terms of marketing sales in your general life a lot of inspiration has also come into this one of the sources of inspiration is my wife here but a lot of other instances i have seen which have impacted me to work on psychology people ask me i mean you are an engineer you studied computer science did it job went into marketing why psychology and how psychology as i told in the start i'm a curious person so around 6 6 and a half years back i used to write some content also as a freelancer so one day my friend called me that hey there is a thesis that you got to write for somebody some student who is in us they usually outsource that there is a good money to get and that's the work that's going to keep coming i thought man how can i write thesis i'm i'm not a phd i'm not even masters so but it's okay let's give it a try when i got it that was something of psychology and the impact of social causes i did extensive research i mean thesis are big 10000 20000 words citations reading other researches and what not i mean in real life i never wanted to do phd but it's okay i wrote thankfully it was accepted i got my money but apart from money what caught my eye was how psychology impacts people how much powerful it is then i started reading more and more research papers getting into it deeper and deeper and then relating it to marketing and that's the result of all of the research that i've done and uh it's it's going good it's it's wonderful it can be useful for each one of you that's my story the result right now that's my team 3000 plus online course enrollments 5000 plus book sales job offers better events i mean one of the reason one of the result is this me standing at this event dharmesh met me at the my book launch and told hey we want to do this i said let's do it so one of the results of this i have got more and more events i have got international events also because of this but the biggest benefit is nine times increment in the clients in my agency can anybody guess the reason why what made me get more clients without pursuing even one extra person take a while yes it's okay brand see it's because of the book obviously the result is because of the book but when it comes to 
giving the, your work to somebody, you will want to give it to somebody who knows the business, right? Not just by saying, not just by somebody else's result, but as an authority in the industry, right? And as told before, book is the biggest, fastest way to build your authority. And the reason why I wrote this book was not to set authority, but that's the side effect of that, that you automatically build the authority. Now, since the time I wrote this book, I'm getting psychology professors also who are following me and asking me questions. I mean, we are discussing things on a day-to-day -day level now that, okay, this is what I have found. What about you? What you are researching and all that kind of things are happening now. And 1.7 times increment in the overall invoicing value for the clients. Even the existing clients wanted more business with me. That is the kind of result that I've got and that is the kind of result that I'm always hungry for. But again, I'm still hungry, want to achieve more. Now, I have a question for you people. A very simple question, but very important. How badly do you need to fulfill your dreams? How badly? No answers? Nobody, nobody has dreams? Wow, man, so much silence. Do you have some dreams? What about you people? You do have, right? Everybody has. So, I mean, I cannot hear. Nobody said yes. Don't you people want to fulfill your dreams? So, be a bit loud. Wake up. We have just started. We all want to fulfill our dreams, right? We all want to lead the life that we have always imagined. Anybody, any, any volunteer, what percentage of that dream have you achieved? So exactly, that's why I'm asking that question from you people itself. You people know your dreams. You people would be able to judge that, okay, I'm midway, I've just started, I'm about to reach. There is always something above your comfort zone. I, I usually say that the comfort zone is the worst place to be in. Everything is awesome. Everything looks beautiful, but nothing grows there. And nobody grows there. Now, we all need our dreams to be fulfilled. We all want to lead that kind of life. We have imagined that, okay, wow, what if I get that? What if I do that? I will share with you one very small exercise which will ensure that it definitely helps you, definitely adds a bit of value. A very tiny process which I follow rigorously, which I religiously follow. First step, create a measurable target. Where do you want to reach? But remember, it has to be measurable. Not saying that, okay, I want to lead a lavish life. That's not measurable. I want to earn five crores in five years. That's measurable. Similarly, create any measurable, measurable target which is related to your dream. Where do you want to see yourself? One year, two year, five year, even six months. Then, where you are right now, based on that, create steps backward. So where do you want to reach? To where you are right now. The steps have to be smallest and practical. It's very important to have practical steps because if they are not realistic, you're going to lose the game in the beginning itself. Once you do that, start fulfilling each step one by one. And the reason why I told you have them as smallest as possible because each step that you will achieve is going to boost your confidence, boost your energy and focus. It may sound too vague and preachy, but trust me on this, that's how your brain functions. Imagine a scenario when you're struggling to work on something, let's say something new comes, comes on to you. Uh, 
maybe a case where your manager comes and tell hey you got to do this that's new for you you are bound to make mistakes but just think about something that you have made a mistake your manager comes and gives a pat on your back hey you tried that's good enough but that's not how it works this is how you should try next time to get better results how would you feel you will feel a boost in your confidence correct that's how this works and most importantly once you will start doing that every day ask yourself one single question what have you done today to achieve your dreams you know what's going to happen it actually happened with me that if my answer to this question was not positive i could not sleep at night i became restless that hey i haven't done anything today i'm not going to achieve my dreams i have not added any value gradually what's going to happen you will kick yourself you will force yourself and see an increase in your value increase in your skills and you will start seeing your growth this is i mean i can vouch for this this is a fool proof method if you be true to yourself but remember measurable targets and smallest realistic steps that's all you got to take care see rest everything stay motivated never give up and all everybody knows that those all are too generic yet they are important but this is one thing that has helped me work day in and day out that has helped me stay focused that has helped me work more and more i'm happy working 20 hours a day as well even like now there are times when i do not sleep and still keep on working happens it may be like okay that's too much of work but this is what has got the fire in me that i have to achieve something whatever i have to get if i'm not working towards it how will i get that i mean i don't have harry potter's wand with me that i'll get something just by i don't know what else i'm not a harry potter fan <laughs> but i hope you get the point well that was me that was my story these are my coordinates if you people want to reach out to me discuss about something want to share your own story or just chit chat you can reach me here